You can't feel it in this video, but you might be able to hear it. This cute little stuffed animal is purring, thanks to an embedded flex sensor that can detect when I pet it, and a vibration motor that helps it vibrate. Researchers have developed companion robots like this one for use in locations like hospitals and nursing homes, where it might not always be feasible for patients to have a live animal like a cat. In this video, I'll show you how to build a companion robot by adding an Arduino to a stuffed animal. Let's take a look at the circuit before we switch over to the computer to take a more detailed look at the circuit diagram and the code. The two main parts of this circuit are the flex sensor and the vibration motor. The Arduino is programmed such that when the flex sensor bends a certain amount or you detect that a person is petting the robot, it is going to pulse the motor on and off to simulate purring. These motors are connected to the breadboard via some long wires so you can mount these inside a smaller stuffed animal while keeping the Arduino separate, or if you were to use a much larger stuffed animal, you could mount everything inside the stuffed animal. If we zoom in and look at the vibration motor, you will see that these have very small, rather fragile wires that can break easily if you pull on them too hard. So I have done two things here to help prevent that if, for example, somebody picks the robot up and yanks on the wires. One, I have added a dab of hot glue to the body of the motor and where those wires connect. And then I have soldered those thin wires to thicker hookup wire, which connects to my breadboard and used heat shrink tubing, both for electrical protection and a little extra mechanical strength on that connection. Again, you still can't tug on this too hard. If you yank really hard, you're going to break the motor off. But if somebody just picks the robot up or moves around, you don't want the wires to break. For the flex sensor, I have used screw terminals because you are not supposed to solder to these directly. They are very sensitive to heat and, oops, you can see I set my motor off there by bending that a little too much. They are very sensitive to heat and trying to solder to these pads directly on the sensor can damage the sensor. So instead what I've done is soldered jumper wires to the pins on the bottom of this screw terminal block and then just screwed the connections or the tabs from the flex sensor into those two screw terminals so I did not have to apply any heat directly to the sensor. And again, that is serving the same purpose of making sure that if somebody picks up the robot or tugs on it a little bit, you're not going to yank the sensor out. I have then, if I zoom back out here, cut a small slit in the back of the stuffed animal, which allows me to insert both the motor and the flex sensor. So you could put these in the same location, or you might want to cut different locations depending on the shape of your stuffed animal and where you expect somebody to pet the robot and how you want it to vibrate. You could also add multiple sensors if you want to detect touch in different locations or multiple motors, or you could do both if you want to have vibration in different locations or make the whole thing vibrate instead of just one spot. So this is really an engineering design project. It's up to you exactly how you are going to build this and where you're going to put everything. But I am now going to switch over to the computer and show you the circuit and the code to get the basic robot working with one flex sensor and one motor. If we switch over to the computer, first we will take a look at the circuit on the breadboard and then we will take a look at the code. I'm just going to do a quick overview here of how to connect the flex sensor and the vibration motor. We do have entire videos about each of these individual parts in our Arduino tutorial series linked in the description of this video. So if you would like more details about each of these parts, you can go check out those videos. We're just going to do a quick overview here. The flex sensor has two pins. I've shown those directly connected to the breadboard here, but again, if you are connecting this to a stuffed animal, you might want to have longer extension wires going to your breadboard. One of those pins is going to go to the ground bus, and one of them is going to go to one of the analog input pins on the Arduino. That second pin is also connected to a large pull-up resistor. I am using a value of 100 kilo ohms, but you might need to experiment with different values depending on the resistance value of your flex sensor. The other end of that pull-up resistor is connected to 5 volts. And what this does is forms a circuit called a voltage divider, which is two resistors in series where you measure the output voltage at the middle. And since the resistance of the flex sensor changes when it bends, that is going to change this output voltage, which is then measured by the analog input of your Arduino. That is all necessary because the Arduino cannot measure changes in resistance directly. It can only measure changes in voltage. So that is why you need this additional external resistor in addition to your flex sensor in order to measure that changing voltage. 
for the vibration motor and I just realized I forgot to follow my color coding convention here. I'm going to use red for the positive wire on that motor. We also need another external part called a transistor. I'm not going to go into detail about all the different types of transistors in this video. This one is called an N-channel MOSFET. It basically acts like an electronic control valve or switch that lets you control power coming from the Arduino's 5 volt supply to power the motor. That is necessary because the Arduino's digital pins can only provide up to about 20 milliamps each, which is enough to light a small LED, but really not enough to drive motors. Even very small motors like this one can draw a few dozen or even about 100 milliamps when they are on. So you don't want to power this motor directly from a digital pin like you could with an LED. You need the MOSFET, which has three pins, one of which is the control pin, which is connected to one of the Arduino's digital pins, but that pin does not draw any current and then you have two other pins called the drain and the source. So electrical current flows from the Arduino's positive five volt supply through the motor, out the motor's negative wire in through the drain and then out through the source to ground. But again, all of that current is coming from the five volt supply or an external battery pack. If you have a lot of motors or a bigger motor, then even that might be too much for the Arduino's five volt supply. We have an entire separate video about powering motors and choosing a power supply for your project. But if you just need one little vibration motor, then the Arduino's 5 volt supply is probably going to be enough. Switching over to take a look at the code, we'll go through this line by line. First, we declare constant variables for the motor pin and the sensor pin. We declare a variable for the sensor reading and a threshold variable that we are going to compare that sensor reading to. When the sensor reading exceeds that value, then we're going to activate the motor. We also want to simulate purring, so we have some variables to keep track of that. You'll see in a minute how we're going to loop through turning the motor on and off. And then in the setup function, I have the pin mode command to set the motor pin as an output. You do not need to use pin mode when using the analog read command with these pins as inputs. You only need to do that for digital read on the digital input pins. I initialize serial communication, which is useful for debugging and determining this threshold value, so you can practice petting the robot and looking at this value on screen and then determining where you want to set it depending on how much pressure you want to activate the motors. And then we move on to the loop function. Within the loop function, we use the analog read command to read the value of the sensor pin. We print that out to the serial monitor for debugging or helping to calibrate that threshold value. And then we have an if statement where if the sensor reading is greater than that threshold value, in this case, I'm just going to pulse the motor on and off four times because I have N set to four, but this is the part of the code you can really change or play with to simulate different types of purring or durations, or if you have multiple motors, you could control them separately here. So there's really no right or wrong way to do this. This is where if you're doing this for a science project, you can maybe, as part of your experiment, do field testing with users and see what they think is the most realistic or the most relaxing or kind of what they prefer with the purring sensation, but this is just very simple code similar to what you would use to blink an LED, where I use digital write to turn the pin on, have a short delay, use digital write to turn it off, have a short delay, but then I repeat that with this while loop, and if I increased the value for N, then it would loop through it more times, so this is a good example of where you can use a loop to avoid repeating code, because you wouldn't want to have to, for example, copy and paste this block of code Every time you want that to repeat, it is much more efficient and neater to use a loop. If I run the simulation here in Tinkercad, you'll see that the motor is off initially while the sensor is straight, but then once I bend the sensor far enough, that if statement in the code will be triggered, causing the motor to pulse on and off. We hope you found this video helpful. Again, remember that for written instructions with example code, a parts list, and the circuit diagram, all of that is available linked in the video description. And for many other cool Arduino science projects, as well as over a thousand other projects in all areas of science and engineering, you can check out the rest of our YouTube channel and our website, www.sciencebuddies.org.